we're going to look at STUVI diagrams. This is the AMS weather website, so get on there, enter your information in, and if you scroll down to where it says upper air, it says STUVI's for selected cities, that's where I'm at. Okay, I'm going to look at two different ones, one up north where it's definitely colder, and one down towards the south where it's, well, definitely warmer. I'll just click on the one in Tallahassee, Florida first, obviously warmer down there. And when you're looking at STUVI diagrams, you're looking at the troposphere. It will show um, where the tropopause is, which is the level in between the troposphere and the next one up, which is the stratosphere. So it shows that. And then it'll show a little bit of the tropopause, which is a very small layer, and then it might show a little bit of the stratosphere. And then after that, they still get some recordings of the information because they use what's called a radio son. They'll drop it, or they'll send, excuse me, they'll send it up, and they'll catch all the information like the wind direction, the temperatures, the um, moisture content, and that kind of stuff, and put all that information into a graph form. Now you can get the actual text data along with it. Um, I could show you where that's at if you want to ever look at the text data. But if you just go back to the main page, it says here for additional. Um, raw and sand sites, which means that'll give you all the text data and, and it can give you actually some more information. To click there. But the graphs are always nice. So the STUVI diagram along the bottom is temperature in Celsius. So remember, we talked about how on the surface observations are all done in those familiar units, otherwise, everything else is done in the more standardized. Here is your pressure levels as you go up into the atmosphere. So about a thousand millibars roughly surface. Of course, it might be different in other places, you know, like the mile high, mile high city. But for a rough guideline, a thousand is the surface. And then each pressure level as you go up. Now, it shows the wind, direction, and speed along the right side. The temperature profile is always the one to the right. A lot of times the, they'll be colored, you know, usually red for the temperature and blue for the dew point, but not all of them are that way. So this one, you'll, but no matter what you're looking at it, whether it's colored or not colored, the one that's to the right is always the temperature. Because dew point will always be lower than the temperature. It could be the same as, but it's either the same as or lower. It's never greater than. So that's a good rule of thumb for you, too. So it'll show you what the temperature looks like as you go up in the atmosphere. And in this case, when you're looking at it, the temperature increases towards the surface, or at the surface going up a little bit and then it'll drop because generally as you go up in the atmosphere you know the temperature decreases as you go up unless something weird is going on weather wise then that's what you're going to end up finding alright so as you're going up you get to this part where they start to diverge in different directions now that's what's called a temperature inversion it just tells you something is going on there something complicated in the atmosphere is taking place and it could be a number of different things we're not going to look at that right now but that's what it's telling you there's because the atmosphere is very complex. There's a lot of little nuances, which is why you can't get the weather forecast 100% correct 100% of the time. You know, 10, 15 days out, there's some weird stuff that goes on that you just can't predict, and you know, it's just the way it's it's always going to be. So that's what that's telling you. Something weird's going on there. And if you had smokestacks, you'd be able to see that because that switch in the the degrees of the temperature at that layer is going to show when the smoke rises up it's going to actually kind of hit a cap in a way and you'll see it moving along that's why if you ever look downtown and you've seen the smoke rising up then all of a sudden it looks like it's going horizontal well there's a temperature inversion there something funky is taking place so that's what that's called now as you continue to go up when you get up into the 200 millibar ish range and of course this depends on how cold it is and how warm it is but you're going to start to notice whether the temperatures are the same, which is called isothermal. If they're ever isothermal and they go for a little bit being isothermal, then that's going to tell you, especially when you're up that far, that there's a switch taking place, meaning that you're going from the troposphere to the tropopause, that in-between layer, and then into the next layer, which is the stratosphere. So in this case, our tropopause is somewhere in the 130-ish uh, millibar range and it's a lot thicker going up you know the altitude is higher because it's warmer down there because the tropopause is very much determined by the temperatures below 
The colder it is, the more the air is dense and the more it hugs the ground, so that tropopause level will be lower to the ground, meaning a higher millibar level. And then you can see that if you look at, uh, let's go to Green Bay. It's not a lot, because if the one in Florida was here, the one in um, Green Bay is more in the 180-ish range. Along the side of the Stubig diagram has the wind direction and the wind speed. So typically the winds will increase as you go up in the atmosphere. Any time you see the black flag, the black flag stands for 50 knots. So every time you have a black flag, you add 50 to it. So in this case, as you go on up a little bit above the 300 millibar level, there's three flags, and that's 150 knot winds. So typically you're going to find that as you go up, the winds are going to increase quite a bit. That's because there's less friction, more friction as you get down towards the ground and hit trees and buildings and the surface and that kind of thing. So that's what the, the side is. And just like on the surface observation, it shows you the direction as well. So think of a compass straight up and down as north. Um, to the right would be more of an east wind, and going down would be a south wind, and off to the left would be a west wind. So as you're heading up, you can see most of the wind speeds are out of the northwest, and they're very quick. If you have any other questions, uh, just send me an email.